Well, Paul Hunter joins us now from Norwich. He is a professor in medicine at the Norwich Medical School at the University of Anglia. He's also an advisor to the World Health Organization. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. I mean, maybe I'm being naive here, but I felt rather encouraged hearing that two people infected with the coronavirus virus had been treated uh, and released from hospital. Do you think that's a positive sign that this virus may only be as dangerous as the normal flu virus that we're all at risk of all over the world every year? Well, I think the, um, the, they're not certainly not the first cases, I'm sure, that have actually recovered from this infection and have been discharged. But clearly, uh, it's, it's a good image to see people recovering and getting uh, um, better and going home again. As in relationship to the influenza virus, certainly um, in the last pandemic year that we had in about 2009, influenza killed an estimated between a quarter and a half million people globally. And it, it's almost certainly uh, this will never, almost certainly not actually get to that sort of level. So in terms of its relationship to its total impact relation uh, compared to influenza, it's probably not going to be near as bad. Right. What does that say to you then about perhaps, you know, disproportionate attention? Is it good to make the global public so aware that this virus is out there? Or does it actually, I've used this phrase before, you know, equate to the boy who cried wolf? when they realize in the end, it's really no more dangerous than the things that we suffer from and are at risk from every day. Well, I think the, the, there is a big difference between the total number of cases and actually the severity of the infection in individuals. As it stands at the moment, we're still not entirely sure how bad this is going to be on individuals who get sick. People, um, uh, the moment the death rate doesn't seem to be as bad as it was in, in the SARS epidemic, but these things have a habit of developing and changing over time. So it, it's absolutely right that we are being cautious about trying to control the spread of infection. Um, how this disease pans out and how it develops in future, we still actually are very early on in the, in the outbreak. So we don't yet totally know how far it's going to spread and how much devastation and how many deaths will be before it, it burns itself out, as it undoubtedly will at some point. Right, because I think the problem now is that there is so much unknown, you know, that tens of thousands of people actually may be infected without knowing it, therefore spreading it, and suddenly we can have this onslaught of infections uh, in places where perhaps people aren't really prepared. Absolutely, and the... Um, there are plenty of countries around the Far East that uh, don't necessarily have the resources that the Chinese have to help control this, this outbreak. And we've heard today about cases in Cambodia, uh, that yesterday there was a report of uh, people of a person-to-person -person transmission in Vietnam. So it is, um, it is a risk, uh, but regionally in more wealthy countries who have perhaps better healthcare systems and more resources, uh, the evidence from SARS was that we were able to uh, control spread uh, in, in these countries, although they did have um, particular problems in Canada as a result of, I think, they relaxed um, hospital infection prevention measures a little early and, and uh, there was a big outbreak in Toronto as a result of that 20 years ago. But certainly, uh, it, it, we're still in a position where we can't say how it's going to develop, and so there isn't any room for uh, complacency at the moment. Okay. Dr. Paul Hunter joining us there. Thank you so much for that.